evening, everyone, and welcome to another webinar in our series. Uh, tonight, we're going to move again along the information train and actually cover off the last subject in the assessment cluster of the TAE qualification. Thank you for those that are there. I know Tristan's going to come a little bit later, um, and we've got some other people joining um, a little bit later as well. Uh, tonight, we're going to be looking at um, TAE AWS 403B, Participate in Assessment Validation. Uh, this subject, I won't go into too much detail now because we're going to obviously cover it off in the introduction to the subject anyway. Uh, but, um, but yeah, it, it talks about a process that we do uh, as a part of uh, our assessment creation and checking off um, as a worker in an RTO or as a, uh, an, an owner of an RTO or whatever the case may be, anyone within the vocational education and training sector or any um, sector. Um, validation is an important part of that and tonight we're going to learn all about it. A couple of changes that we're going to do tonight. First up, rather than wait for the Q&A at the end, um, you guys will have the ability to unmute yourselves um, at the at, at any stage and ask questions as we go, which is probably better rather than as I move through a topic or a subject that, you know, some really valid question you had 45 minutes ago almost feels like it's um, un unwanted or unwarranted uh, at the end of the session because we've gone and spoken about so many other things. So uh, tonight you will have the ability to uh, to unmute yourself at any stage and ask a question as we're going because like we all, always say in the classroom environment as well, um, the only silly question is is a question not asked or a question that's asked far too late in the process. So feel free to pop your um, hands and in and yeah, pop your hands up using the interact button if you want. Um, so again, across the top of your screen, you'll have cam, Discord, uh, desktop probably and a couple other buttons, but one of them will be the interact button. You can click on that button, raise the hand and um, yeah, and unmute yourself, so to speak, and, and ask a question. Cool. The other one that we're probably going to start dealing with um, on a Friday, I'm going to start putting Friday aside uh, for you guys for assistance, TAE assistance. So I'll be at um, Preston. Uh, you can call in, Skype in, uh, but we'll sort of coordinate our, our um, assistance times because unfortunately with such a busy uh, week um, last week, I know some of you guys are still waiting for me to get uh, back to you on stuff. So um I think that, yeah, you can you can pop your questions in or whatever the case may be, but allow for the fact that it'll be Fridays will be my day to help you guys um, on your work and whatever the case may be. Um, if you want to come in and see me face-to-face -face and you want to you know make that hole in your day or whatever the case may be, you can, but Fridays will be our scheduled day, um, like we schedule it for our driving instructor clients um, out of Preston and via phone, Skype, and whatever the case may be. Cool. So I think with that... Uh, we'll uh, get started. Excellent. So welcome again to tonight's topic, uh, uh, participate in assessment validation. Uh, like I said, we'll have a quick overview of tonight's topic, go into the about, I think there's four chapters for this one, and then the Q&A, uh, like I said, along the way, and also obviously always one at the end, but like I said, go for it, guys. Um, pop your hand up if you need to during it, and uh, let's knock this one out of the park. So tonight we're going to be looking at what is validation, um, why do it, and with that we ask ourselves, well, you know, what's validation good for, and how to do it, and when to do it, and, and that obviously all goes around the assessment validation process. So asking ourselves, well, what is validation, um, why do we do it, and the how and when we get to do it. So chapter one, validation itself. So when we ask ourselves, what is um, validation or assessment validation. I'm going to give you the Oxford Concise Dictionary type answer uh, and then obviously break through some hopefully some plain English versions of that. So sort of straight from a resource, it'll say assessment validations are intended to ensure consistency, fairness and equity with regard to assessment methods, tools and evidence collection processes. They are an essential part of a quality assurance and continuous improvement system in any um, or in a training or, and or assessment organisation. In the validation process, information is collected about various aspects of assessment, 
this information is calculated and analysed, right? then a plan is put in place to implement these improvements. Uh, progress is then reviewed against this plan. Good preparation is essential in any continuous improvement process, uh, especially validation procedures. So I'll go back a, a, a screen. Um, validation is a process that us as um, any RTO or really anyone who's in an assessment um, uh, situation, and I don't know, Melissa, whether or not you ever did validation processes as LTOs um, at Vic Roads or whether people further up the train or further down the train or whatever the case may be, we're going through a validation process. But pretty much it's, it's in essentially it's when a group of uh, trainers, um, whether they all work for the same company or whether they all work in the same area or they work within the same training packages for, you know, for, for external or different organisations, they come together and it's a quality assurance um, process. I won't go too much into when we do, um, when we actually do uh, validations because we'll talk about that, that in greater detail. But um, as a part of, um, if you can imagine it, if you guys have had the time to start doing your assessment cr um, creation as a part of the plan assessment activities and assess competence units, you'll have started that mapping. And validation in really easy terms is like mapping on steroids. So if you think about validation as mapping on steroids, it's this really um, uh, stringent uh, quality assurance process where we get our assessments that we've created or used or whatever the case may be. And we get with a group of like-minded individuals or, or, or equally qualified people or people that all use that same assessment tool in the job at a training organization. And we all sit down together and we work out, hey, is this assessment any good? Is it doing its job? Is it producing the evidence? So it's a quality assurance measure. And it is an essential part of the quality assurance and continuous improvement system of any training or assessment organization. And it is a part of the standards of RTOs that is a part of the AQF. So. Uh, as, as RTO owners, uh, we must um, demonstrate to auditors our validation processes uh, across all of our assessments. And all, all of our assessments are on a uh, time scale or a rotating calendar of validation. So, you know, virtually, I think off the top of my head, it's like you have to ensure that every assessment that you use within your training organization has gone through some sort of training uh, process. Um, across any five-year sort of period, I think, or, or yeah. So we some say we'll, we'll check every assessment every 12 months. Um, exactly. Thank you, Alex. Just confirming it for me. It is. It's within a five-year cycle. Any RTO must show that they've gone through and validated every one of their single assessments that they are using to, to, to determine comp uh, competence for their, for their students. It's amazing. It was like an echo then, but all I was doing was repeating every word I said twice. Um, sorry guys um uh at its it's six months could be every six weeks depending on the subject cool um in the validation process information is collected about oh yeah cool yeah actually i did i yeah i kind of read this didn't i but anyway i'll read it again in the validation process information is collected about various aspects of assessment this information is collated and analyzed improvements are identified and then a plan is put in place to implement these improvements so exactly that guys um as we go through the validation process, there's a pro forma that we fill out. Um, assessors, you know, both individual and in the collective, uh, pop, pop in their two two bobs worth, so to speak. Um, these things are, and when I say that, it's a little bit more uh, professional than that. Uh, but they put in, uh, they'll, they'll add to their contribution of where they think the, um, uh, assessments work well, where they don't work well. The validation process itself should highlight in and uh, definitely identify any issues or problems um, with assessments. And then, like I said, we we have a register, uh, a, a register of um, uh, improvement, so to speak, or a register of amendments or um, a continuous improvement register, where as, as an RTO, after they've gone through validation, um, we write down what's been um, discovered through the validation process, the plan of how we're going to improve that assessment, um, whether it's the assessment tool, procedure or rules or writing or anything about the assessment tool and the process, so to speak. Um, we document the changes and we give a date of when those changes will be implemented by. And then we have like a final um, uh, sign off where uh, me, it's actually my job role at ITS as a training manager. I'm meant to sign off and say, yes, that, that process has now been complete. So it, it pretty much, if you can imagine, it's just a table that says, 
virtually you know assessment validation process what type of validation took place there's a few different categories that we're going to look at um, the identified um, areas of improvement the suggested improvements um, when they've been validated when um, that assessment's gone from version you know 2017-1 to 2017-2 um, and then we kind of sign off that it's been done and dusted as it says here in the bottom paragraph progress is then reviewed against this plan good preparation is essential in any continuous improvement process especially validation procedures so when we go about and start to do a validation process um, which is again we'll talk about in more detail in the next few slides um, one of the important things is planning um, clearly understanding who's going to be involved in the validation process who's going to be the person who chairs it or kind of runs it um, all the documents that we need, because you can imagine when you're validating something. So when you're getting an assessment and saying, "Hey, does it do the job right?" Is it, you know, again, it's like a mapping, uh, a mapping um, exercise on steroids. Obviously, you need units of competence. You need the assessment. You need any supporting documents. Um, you may need, you know, um, uh, finished, completed assessment tools, and you may need new assessment tools or master assessment tools. All those things need to be make sure that they are in place and there for you. Um, for the for the hour three hours or day that you send, spend doing that validation because again getting all your trainers into the room at one time or organizing different rtos to come into a central location to do a validation process is a costly exercise for any rto um, it's very valuable in the in terms of outcomes but from a dollar point it's a costly exercise so you need to be well prepared to make sure that that process runs as smooth as possible um, because downtime is just costing everyone money and can be frustrating. As an assessor, uh, you will need to participate in validation processes, whether you are validating your own assessments or that of others from, uh, from your RTO. So you may have written and created a, an assessment and then as a result of that, you'll be a part of the panel that is put together to run through the validation process for that assessment. Or likewise, just as you'll have other people being a part of your validation panel working on your assessment, you can obviously be um, uh, on another panel um, validating, help validating another colleague's um, assessment. It is not uncommon to act as an independent assessor participating in an assessment validation process for another RTO. Uh, more about that later, but that's now become... Um, an, an incredibly um, important part of the validation process and especially all around this TAE qualification. Um, external validation and all that now must occur for this qual. Um, validation itself has been really stiffened up in the new future um, in regards to uh, an RTO that wants to run and teach um, the TAE, the new TAE qualification when it is officially kind of... Um, at that point where you can no longer train this one um yeah there's a whole lot of sort of more stringent validation um procedures in in place that we all have to adhere to um and a part of that will be that external validation um is required for your assessments so so many rtos will do internal um internal validations it's now kind of become mandatory that if you're going to run the new tae that you will have to you will have to um, have externally uh, moderated or validated um, assessments. However, one thing is clear, uh, during a validation session, uh, assessors compare and evaluate the use and effectiveness of their assessment methods, procedures and assessment decisions, decisions to ensure that they have used appropriate tools and methods, the ass assessment procedures are fair and equitable, the methods and tools assess only what they are intended to, to assess. The methods and tools give consistent results in a range of different settings. The tools, the instruments enable collection of sufficient appropriate evidence to support the judgment of competence and judgments of competence are valid, reliable and fair. So if I go back to, I guess, um, that to again, try to give you the plain English version, um, it is, like it says, it's a place where assessors come together, um, they compare and evaluate the effectiveness, uh, effectiveness of the methods and the tools that they've created. And really what you're doing, you are, um, as you go through a validation document, you're really ticking off that this assessment you created is 
is is adhering to the rules of evidence and the principles of assessment, uh, plus um, some other rules and, and regulations required in um, as a requirement of all the standards for RTOs that, um, that yeah, the assessments you cre created are, are fair, they're equitable, um, they're assessing what they're meant to be assessing, uh, they're creating the evidence that um, they're creating. Uh, there's another process called moderation where we check so that as a part of the validation process or, or, or uh, running parallel to um, the validation process is another thing called moderation where we look at um, who's ticking pass and fail and whether or not um, that's um, being equally fair um, and, and people would um, pass or fail that assessment tool on any given day with any uh, given assessor. So this validation process really is, it's the principles of assessment and the rules of evidence um, keeping in mind the unit of competence um, and the job role that these people are a part of and asking ourselves, does this assessment tool do the job? Does it get people doing what they need to do? Do they clearly understand what's required? Um, when they're going through that assessment process, do the tools that the assessor are using, are they effective? Do they allow them to really gather the right type of evidence? Does it get them to be able to record correctly what's required? Um, and, and as a result of all those things, does this assessment tool and all of its processes and all of its instruments that it's that has come together to create this assessment tool, does it get the job done right? Can assessors truly deem a person competent against all the required criteria as a result of the, that use? So chapter two, why participate or have an assessment validation process? So validation is part of an organization's quality processes for registered training organizations, RTOs, it is a requirement of the AQTF. Um, so that's the Australian Qual Qualification Training Framework. Um, and there's a standard in there. I remember I was talking about that last weekend a little bit. There's a, there's a set number of standards that RTOs, very open, long um, um, uh, paragraphs or, or statements that um, RTOs need to prove that they can understand, interpret and adhere to. And a part of that is that um, the, the AQTF standards that RTOs must conduct regular assessment validations. Like we said, that there's a five month um, cycle on a five year cycle, sorry, on 100% of your assessments being used within your RTO that they're validated um, and, and updated. As stated earlier, validations are intended to ensure consistency, fairness, and equity with regard to assessment methods tools and evidence collection processes. They're an essential part of the quality assurance and continuous improvement system in a training and or assessment organization. For any organization using assessment, validation will ensure that the assessment processes, the methods, the tools and decisions are valid and reliable. And like I was saying to you before, I mean, I've already once again gone ahead and um, preempted myself, but it is all a part of the principles of assessment and the rules of evidence. It's that mapping uh, process on steroids. The benefits of assessment validation track further than meeting AQTF requirements though. Uh, successful RTOs use validation as a means of assuring quality uh, that boosts morale within the workforce and student population. When you have good, strong, vigorous um, validation processes, especially when you've got a lot of trainers working in a particular qualification using, using a particular assessment tool, you can imagine getting together and having all your assessors and trainers sharing their experiences, sharing what they like and dislike about the um, an assessment tool or the assessment processes as a result of that tool is certainly going to build camaraderie and also confidence. Um, as an assessor, you could be out there doing the job on your own to come in and go, hey guys, you know, I don't really have troubles with the observation um, tool in this particular part. And everyone goes, oh my God, I was feeling the same way. That's a great morale booster for the team. All of a sudden, you know, a lot of those individual assessors and trainers out there working on their own are reminded they are working a part of a team. Uh, they are um, sharing the same um, emotions as others, and that's a major benefit. And more importantly, um, uh, chances uh, for or, or identification for improvements are, are created and made, and they those uh, um, improvements are implemented, and and everyone walks away a, a better um, trainer, a better RTO. Um, and that all leads to students having a better interaction with, with that learning process or learning pathway within the company you're working for. So benefits also include, uh, it is a mechanism that encourages assessors to learn from one another. Again, I've got to stop preempting myself. 
Um, I and I do, as it says there, I always learn from validation sessions. I always have over the years. Whenever we do a validation, I, I seem to come out a little bit smarter than, than when I walked into the room. Um, and that can work both ways. Alex last year and I um, had a, a, a much larger RTO come to us uh, to do an external validation because a part of that whole, you got to start validating with other um, um, RTOs. It was quite funny because they are a much larger RTO than us. And the guy kind of came, he's a very, very nice guy. And the guy came to the validation process with a bit of a, you little guys, uh, we're going to, you know, obviously, I hope you don't get too uh, embarrassed with uh, with everything that will go on uh, over the next uh, four hours. Uh, needless to say, the poor fella um, was, it was so funny where he, he ended up, he couldn't even hide anymore. He was saying, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Your quality control measures and your ability to write assessments that meet the criteria is so far superior to what we have been doing it's embarrassing it should be the other way around we have a whole quality assurance team we have a you know we have all these assessors and trainers and it was again we we learned from it and there was things that they had that we weren't doing that we certainly benefited from um but it was funny um in the end hearing that the, the, the poor guy's whole demeanor about the whole situation was that um yeah that they he actually got far more from the validation process than what we actually did and and as you guys know if you were to look at our company structure um there is a lot of uh the same name going around and around doing different jobs so um i can be training manager um janitor uh quality assurance officer um lead um validation officer um carpet uh, sweeper uh, or carpet vacuumer toilet cleaner and, and going on and on and on so the, within our processes there's a lot of job roles that keep on getting folded in in, in such a small rto uh, like i said it was funny that these guys had independent workers doing independent jobs all in that area yet a lot of their stuff came up incredibly short and like i said it leads to great accountability across your organization too when you get people in the room talking about these things uh, problems are identified people become accountable and that's and that's good and, and at the same time too no one can say oh, i didn't know uh, because you're all there on that day of validation you've all signed off that you're a part of that process um, and that you all learn and 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 left there with with a clear understanding of what was required from the assessment tool so that that does lead to a, a higher accountability the other outstanding benefits include providing evidence for external and or internal audits um, uh, hey tristan uh, so um, providing uh, uh, audits are a, are a part of the life of any RTO or any um, assessor and trainer. You will, if you're going to work for an RTO, at some stage you will be a part of an audit process. Um, it can be internal um, where uh, larger organisations or, again, um, even smaller organisations will go through an internal audit um, just as an own quality assurance measure. And then at different times, you're going to be externally audited by the regulators um, if you're a Victorian registered um, RTO, the VRQA uh, will be a part of that, um, or Skills Victoria, sorry. Um, there's the people that are involved in handling the funding. Um, they can audit you. They're quite um, uh, rigorous and, and almost nasty types of audits. Um, and then you've got the overall um, regulators. If you're, a, if you're a, an AQF, sorry, if you're a ASQA registered RTO, you can deliver all over Australia, then you can be a part of an ASQA audit. You can provide professional development for assessors. You can determine whether different assessors or facilitators using the same tools collect the same types and levels of evidence. And as I was saying before, that's massive. You can imagine that you are hoping that um, any assessors using um, the same assess uh, assessment tool um, are interpreting the, the instructions all the same, are using the assessment implement, um, instruments the same, um, and then as a result of that, they're gathering the same types of and levels of evidence. So, um, you know, if, if someone is answering, if it says in your own words, uh, you know, tell us about this and someone's right is accepting that, so, you know, that a student writes yes as an answer when it was, when a whole paragraph is, is really what's acceptable, then the validation process is going to highlight that and, and identify that. And you'll be able to, like I said, uh, bring up your, your quality assurance. Also determine whether different assessors and the facilitators interpret the same evidence similarly. And again, all this harks back to the, the rules of um, uh, the principles of assessment, um, as well as the rules of evidence. But that one especially, determining whether different assessors and facilitators interpret the same evidence similarly. 
that obviously is a part of the principles of assessment that you get that our students are getting a fair um, assessment and that you're not more likely to pass or fail because you've had either Cameron or Alex or Matt or Tristan or Melissa or Adrian or, or whoever else um, as your assessor. Cool. Chapter three. We're actually flying through this, which is good. How to participate in assessment validation. So first up, remember, assessment validation needs to be planned. Um, it needs to be targeted at a specific audience. So what we're saying is we are working out who needs to be there and what this um, particular uh, validation process is about. Um, it needs to be documented. So all, all of the um, requirements um, in regards to uh, the documents needed to um, run the validation process smoothly um, is, is there. And at the end of the day, um, understanding that it's focused um, on identified areas such as assessment methods and tools. And, and again, and obviously with in regards to this, what um, assessment validation needs to be, it needs to be focused on identified areas such as this and assess, and assess as assessment methods and tools. So understanding why the trainers are getting together and what the key component of this, the whole reason for this validation process needs to be well and truly articulated uh, before the meeting. So everyone comes prepared and understands what's, what's going to be required. Uh, first up, remember that um, to determine whether assessment de decisions um, reflect the rules of evidence, that they're sufficient, um, that they're um, fair, um, that they're, it's, uh, they're valid, um, and all, yeah, I, I won't go through every individual one, but yeah, so under, asking yourself, when these assessors are either passing or failing students, are they reflecting the rules of evidence? As well, of course, is that the assessment policies uh, and procedures are effective and are being followed. So that, again, that's where we're looking at our assessment tool. Are the instructions to the assessor clear, concise, and easily followed? And are they being followed? And likewise, the instructions to the student, are they clear? Um, are students able to follow them? And again, are they being followed? So important. Um, and that obviously goes through to, to, to the third dot point, which is candidates are receiving the kind of information they need about the assessment. Again, any assessment process should be pretty clear and concise. Um, sometimes you can't always be there in person to explain the whole process of um, the assessment. Hence why um, we do have recorded webinars of us explaining the assessments. Um, if we can't go through it in person. Uh, generally speaking, really the whole idea of those Saturday sessions is a part of that is that we get together as a group and I can run through the assessment with you in person and you get that first-hand account of what's actually being required. Because as we all know, as good as um, we all think we can write um, written instructions to an assessment, um, it's still open to interpretation. And there's nothing worse than we've had that because I've been I've had feedback from you guys where there's a little bit of confusion about what's required, um, and it does need that time together for me to say, hey, this is what you actually need, and this is what's required. I know I was hoping to have had an um, um, an email done for a couple of you guys explaining that, um, yeah, just to make that whole process cleaner. So the validation process does identify that, and when we do validate assessments. We do record if all, all you guys are sort of getting back to us saying, oh my God, Cameron, what, what do you mean by part P of that assessment? Then we will tend to actually not even wait to be honest with you for the assessment um, validation process. If we're getting feedback from you guys consistently, the, the, an area of an assessment is, is hard for you to understand and follow, then we actually go and fix that almost immediately. It'll go onto the document improvement register um, that's not the proper name for that register. I just can't think of the, the, the proper name for it. It might be the Continuous Improvement Register, um, but it, it'll go to that and we'll, we'll um, note that those things have been changed. Um, and as it comes around to the validation process for that assessment, that document will be there so everyone understands what improvements have been made anyway across the life of that assessment and the, that assessment tool um, before we got to the validation day for it. Um, assessment resources are properly designed um, and assessors are assessing consistently. So determine whether the assessment decisions reflect the rules of evidence. 
the assessment policies and procedures are effective and are being followed. Candidates are receiving the kind of information they need to be able to fairly um, be a part of that assessment um, and assessment process. Um, that the actual resources are properly designed, they're doing the job right, and when they are being used, the assessors are actually assessing consistently. From a personal perspective, uh, you will need to ask yourself, how do I identify an opportunity to participate in an assessment validation process? Um, and who's, go who's going to be there or who is the coordinator of the activity? So if I was working um, for, for an RTO, I would head off to your training manager or whoever's in charge of you and say, hey, um, haven't been long in the job or whatever the case may be, I would love to be a part of any validations that you have. Now, a good RTO will, have, will bring you into that anyway, and they'll understand that as a trainer new to industry, having a day or an hour or two or whatever the case may be, sitting with more experienced assessors using the same tools as you um, is invaluable is absolutely invaluable. But if that is not there, go make sure that you knock on the door and say, hey, I would love to be a part of the validation process. Um, over the, we, we have had the odd person who's done this course over the years, who's actually got back to me and said, hey, Cameron, um, I, rang, I just rang my local RTO and said, I've just become a newly qualified TAE uh, trainer. And if you're going to do any validation, um, could I be a part of it? And they did get a Guernsey. A couple of them did get a Guernsey. The RTO said, yeah, yeah, come on in. Um, I know one, it led to employment. The other one, it didn't, but not that the person was going there for that. So putting your hand up, it could be, again, one of those things where you go to your um, our industry you know, skills body or whatever the case may be and say, hey, I'm an assessor in this area. Um, I want to look for an opportunity to be a part of a validation process. There are a lot of assessor and trainer networks, lots of them. and all of those networks will tend to have planned assessment validation processes as a part of their um, uh, function as an association. So um, Transnet, who we were a part of, which is the Transport Trainers uh, and Assessors Network, um, it's a great association, um, so to speak. Um, they, their yearly conferences um, always a part of that yearly conference is there's a, there's a validation day. And they do that so all the RTOs and all the trainers that are members of that um, Transnet group can tick off their um, professional development criteria um, and their quality assurance criteria, but especially their professional development activities that all staff members of an RTO need to be a part of. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity outside of you working uh, for an RTO or working inside an RTO for you to be a part of a validation process. And especially after this course, if you choose to join any um, uh, trainer and assessor group, and there are lots of them, they will have plenty of scheduled validation processes that you could join. Um, will the validation be undertaken prior to, during, or after assessment? That's a massive um, question because in actual fact, for most of the time, we categorize any validation process on those three criteria. Is this a validation that's being done prior to an assessment being used? Is this validation process taking place whilst um, watching an assessment uh, being used? Or is this a validation process that is taking place after assessment tools are being uh, are used and what that function means? Um, what kind of assessment are we validating? Is it, an, uh, is it a combination assessment that has Q&A? Is it observation only? Is it only a part of? Is it formative assessment? Um, is it um, summative assessment, um, which you would have gone through in those different, um, uh, that, that other webinar that I didn't deliver, but you should have watched? Is it a diagnostic assessment? So um, that obviously frames very much what you're expecting to get from the pro, um, process. Um, identify the purpose of the assessment uh, validation activity, which I just preempted myself. Uh, this will help ensure the positive outcomes uh, for the group, uh, for you and the group. So understanding that these key elements um, need to be these two, as long as, as well as these ones, all come together to make sure that you have a better chance of correctly um, how toing a validation. So what um, you will do in a validation session is review 
compare and evaluate the assessment process, tools and evidence contributing to judgments made by a range of assessors um, against the same competency standards. Like I said, it's like a mapping, it really is a mapping process on steroids. Um, document the outcome and any set out plans to take action to improve the quality and consistency of the assessment. Like I said before, it's all about that document, um, uh, that continuous improvement register. We've gone through a validation. We've identified what the validation is all about. We've gone through the validation process. We've documented the um, improved um, requirements, improvement requirements. We've implemented them. It gets signed off. Um, life moves on. So remember, these may be internal processes with stakeholder environment. Uh, involvement, sorry, or or external validations with other providers and or stakeholders. So um, when when we are creating a new assessment, I think I was telling you guys about this before, we go out, um, seek industry involvement and get them to have a look at our um, our our assessments and, and get them to contribute to that. We get them to validate our assessments before we put them up to order to have them added to our scope of registration. Remember, scope of registration is a RTO speak for the things we're allowed to teach and assess and give certificates for. Um, so stakeholders can be industry, um, uh, other people that work, uh, clients, uh, they can be other people that work within an RTO, um, and as this can be other providers um, and all people from other areas. So regulators, so, you know, not that we've ever seen the TSC come to um, a validate, an external validation process for the driving instructor qualification. Um, but yeah, you would hope that if all the RTOs in Victoria said, let's get together and validate a particular unit to do with the driver training course, that the Taxi Services Commission, our regulator, um, would maybe come in and be a part of that process. Needless to say, they normally, uh, I think in the past, have said no. What will you need? So what physical resources are required? Um, as consistently mentioned, uh, being well-planned is essential to any successful validation process. Part of that process requires the organisation of all the correct um, documents. Uh, the materials you'll need to validate an assessment are, and as it says there, but not limited to, um, the current version of the training package that these company standards or qualifications are drawn from, samples of the assessment tools, the evidence and assessment decisions. So that can be um, a brand new assessment that's never been used and also um, an assessment that has been used, including any evidence, if it's just written answers, whatever, that it's a filled out assessment tool, or if it's um, assessing someone that had a finished product, that that product is there as well as the assessment tool, including any documentation outlining the basis for the assessment decisions. So any trainer notes, any places or spaces where trainers record what they're seeing or making the decisions upon, or that's a part of it and should be there. Um, feedback from the candidates audit or self-assessment reports, and correspondence on assessment. Um, so uh, you're there, the assessors are there, and all the paperwork is there. Um, so what should happen next? Uh, the lead assessor should promote conversation and participation by asking the assessors how they have used the assessment tool, um, what evidence they have accepted in support of competence when using the assessment tool. So hey, guys, um, who's used this assessment tool? Fantastic, we all have. Cool. Um, what's your experience like? What do you like about it? What you don't like about it? Fantastic. Awesome. That's great feedback. Thank you, everyone, for contributing. Um, tell me, guys, when it comes to question one, what do you accept as, uh, as an, what do you take as an acceptable answer? And again, it's promoting conversation, um, the sharing of information. We're bringing everyone onto the same board um, or the same place, which is vitally important. The people with whom they have used the assessment tool, um, the outcomes of the assessment process, and such decision, decisions should highlight whether the tool has been well constructed or not. And it will. That conversation will certainly highlight. Um, assessors won't, shouldn't have any problem telling you what they like about an assessment tool and what they don't like about it. And likewise for you guys, if you're using an assessment tool, you're a part of an assessment process, if there's parts of it you don't like, you've got to let it be known. It is vital that the outcomes of validation are recorded accurately using templates, checklists or other mechanisms decided by your, your practice environment. Um, as a participant, check that the outcomes of the validation session have been accurately recorded, including agreed future action. Very, very important. So you've got some sort of template that you're using. Um, when everyone, whoever's been, um, to, whoever's been nominated as the scribe, as the person who's going to either type in um, the, the answers or write down the answers, that the other people, the other part of that um, uh, validation panel 
are going to make sure that they all have a read um, of what's been written down and agree on that that is accurate, that it does reflect what's been um, identified as a part of the process and it is the agreed action that has been written down. Does that make, that make sense to everyone, doesn't it? I'm sure it does. So remember, version control is an important feature of an RTO. It will be imperative that, it, that implemented improvements to any assessment tool reflect the need for version control via new version numbers. It is common practice that assessors sign a confidentiality agreement. So you will notice at the bottom of all our assessment tools, um, you'll see that it's like 2016.1 or 2016.3 or it's 2017.1 or 2017.2. Um, that's a part of version control, that any improvement that is made to your to those assessments and as we uh, identify the problems, fix them, that that assessment becomes from version 1 to version 2 or from version 88 to version 89, whatever the case may be, how many improvements that you've made across the life of that assessment tool. Um, version control is mightily important. Um, it's a part of uh, one of the first things auditors do, auditors do is always get all the documents and watch out, work out that the version control is correct. Um, it used to be always that one place where a lot of RTOs would fail. Let's say looking at your um, training and assessment um, plan or your TAS. Um, it talks about here that students will be using, you know, assessment uh, 2016.1. I look down here and what you've given me to look at is 2016.3. What's going on? So all that stuff needs to be always updated and reflected in, um, yeah. And that can be the other way around. The, the test says they're using 2016.3 and they look down and see it's 2016.1 and they'll go, what the hell's going on here? And like I said, it is very common practice that assessors sign a confidentiality agreement, especially when you're doing external um external um, audits that you know the the protection of RTOs and that they they their maybe good name is not sullied by a small error within um, their assessment creation or evidence gathering and that um, that people don't go out and use that against them as a part of that process so it's, it, it again it is very common that a confidentiality agreement is signed if you're especially doing external RTOs or if you've got external people coming in to do validation processes on your assessments, I'd be getting them to sign confidentiality agreements. So what else can be reviewed as part of an assessment validation process? Uh, competency standards, um, assessment procedures, student feedback, assessment decisions, and audit requirements. So all of those um, uh, areas can be um, validated especially things like, you know, are you gathering any student feedback, whatever the case may be, that, that, all that stuff. I won't sort of really go into that in too much to, um, detail. I think it makes sense. The competency standards is obviously um, validating that you're using the most up-to-date um, unit of competence from the most up-to-date training package, um, that the competency standards, what the um, what's required to demonstrate competency for that um, particular unit of competence, uh, versus what you have in your assessment tool um, is, is all on the same page. Uh, again, obviously the assessment procedures itself, so what you're getting these people to do and how you're getting to do them. So that's really those instructions to the assessor and any particular procedure you've chosen to use to allow people to create evidence that you can make an assessment decision across. Obviously, that can be looking at the OH&S of something, you know, uh, no, 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 we get our people to drive blindfolded on, you know, um, uh, develop safe, uh, apply safe car driving by, um, behaviors. Uh, we believe that you know the procedure of getting them to drive blindfolded really proves that they're great drivers. Well, of course, that assessment procedure in a validation process would be um, against an OHS benchmark would be deemed really bad. So yeah, cool. I won't go on with any more poor um, poor uh, examples like that. Chapter four, um, our final chapter: uh, when to participate or conduct assessment validation. This one's, you know, again, especially the, in the next couple of slides, the information about when we do this um, validation process will really help make sense of this whole subject. So the AQTF requires that RTOs validate their assessment strategies and contribute to judgments made by a range of assessors against the standards, at least annually. So that doesn't mean all of your assessments, but at least once a year, you're going through this process at least once. Um, validation can be carried out before, during, or after assessment. 
And it's important to keep that in mind, that it can be before, during, or after assessment, as highlighted before. Before assessment. So this is actually now giving you guys an understanding of what each category is about and what we're trying to achieve if we're validating at that stage um, of an assessment um, process, so to speak. So before assessment, at this stage, validation concentrates on the design of the assessment tools and the interpretation of the units of competency to be assessed. It is important to ensure that assessors have a common understanding of the standard to be achieved and the evidence to be collected. So for us on Saturday, if we're going to do a validation, if you guys can bring in one of your assessments, if you get it done, don't panic if you don't, um, but if you can have your assessment done, we will do a validation process, whether it's this week or next week, and um, we'll see how we go. Um, but that validation will be a before assessment. So it will allow you guys to design your assessment tool, you bring it in, we're gonna get out the assessment validation pro forma, we're gonna get the unit of competence, and we're gonna sit around your assessment, and we're gonna ask ourselves, does it do the job? And we get to tick, 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 and cross, 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 cross. You guys will get to identify um, where, um, it won't be there, so, sorry, no worries, Matt. Um, you will uh, get to um, identify where your assessment tool is doing the job right and where it's possibly doing it wrong. And guess what's going to happen? You are going to create version two of your assessment, um, which you need to do, which is a part of the assess, develop, um, uh, sorry, the participate in assessment um, process and all that actually will in the end ask you to have more than one version of your assessment that it shows that you've been able to create an assessment, map it, validate it, identify any issues, and then correct it and make it a version two. Cool. So um, that's what's going to happen. If not this Saturday, the Saturday after, um, we will validate um, all of our assessments because you will in the end for those other subjects show that you have version one and a version two. Hopefully for you guys, um, the difference between version one and version two is not too much. During assessment. At this point, assessment validation concentrates on the performance of the candidate during assessment, the process of assessment, and the way the assessor carries out assessment. So what we're really doing in the first one, we're looking at how the assessment's been designed and does it meet the criteria. For the second type of validation, this during this assessment, we're really watching and looking at the assessment at work, the assessment tool at work, the assessment processes. So what the tool demands that the student does to, pro to create um, evidence for us to be able to deem them um, competent and also what it asks of or expects the assessor to be able to do in their job role. You know, does it help them um, be able to run a fair, valid, reliable, you know, um, assessment or does the way the assessment tool, the way the assessment tool's been written and the processes it asks for, not just for the student, but also of the assessor, um, is it good? Does it do the job? Um, and of course, at the end of the day, um, the evidence sometimes um, that comes from it, but that really is more in the second, the third type of after assessment. So hopefully that makes sense. Before assessment, we're really looking at the assessment tool, how it's been created. Is it covering off all the criteria of the benchmark? The second one during assessment, we're asking and validating how does this tool work? Is it does it do the job or does it fail in this job? Does it make does it create for a safe assessment environment or does it or does it create a dangerous assessment environment? And like I said, after assessment. At this stage, assessment validation concentrates on how effective the assessment was, the standards of performance achieved, the validity of the evidence collected, and the accuracy and consistency of the assessment judgment. Now it's sometimes assessment moderation. Um, can get whacked into the after assessment validation process. Moderation and validation um, or after assessment validation and assessment moderation can be a very similar thing. Anyone with any children at the moment in high school that are going through year 12, any year 12 high school at the moment are meant to have or a good quality school will have every single piece of work that your child hands in and gets corrected by their teacher will then be moderated by a, a panel of teachers also from that faculty. So your child hands in uh, their English um, sack, they call them sacks these days, cats when you're in before year 10, sacks from year 11 and 12, 
um, they hand that in. Your their teacher goes, great, 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 great. That's an A plus. Um, it goes off to the moderation team. They look at it and they all go, no, nah, actually, we think this is just a B plus and might get changed to a B plus. So um, that's moderation. That's when you are just purely looking at um, the answers and the mark that's been given for it or you look at the finished assessment tool and a panel agrees to what that's worth, whereas the, whether it's competent, not competent, an A, B, C, D, E, F, or whatever the case may be. Whereas after assessment validation, it definitely looks at that, you know, the assessment judgment, but it also looks at these other points. Um, it concentrates on how effective the assessment was. Um, was it smooth? Did it, you know, did a did were the did the candidates have a fair and equitable chance to produce what needed to be produced? The standards, did it actually get the people to do what was required, or was it written so poorly, or whatever the case may be, or was it unachievable? What was, you know, what the assessment asked for was unachievable, or was it too low of a benchmark? Um, uh, again, all those things are being looked at at a after assessment validation process. So this learning topic has examined some of the processes used during validation and the responsibilities of the participants. Um, it's important to be prepared um, for, for, again, for the validation process, pre-reading of the assessment tool, especially the unit of competence and the assessment requirements, the evidence requirements. Um, so when you walk into that validation process, you have a clear understanding of what's kind of required by the unit or the job role, the job function, and especially the evidence requirements around the unit of competence, um, and be able to, yeah, maybe have some initial notes to go in there to be prepared with that. Um, at the end of the day, um, in regards to the assessment for this unit, um, which again, will participate in either this Saturday or next Saturday, as I said, so to demonstrate competence in this unit, you will need to explain the validation purpose and context and the legal and ethical responsibilities of assessors. Include the documentation to be submitted to the validation process, which is your assessments. Um, I'll come. I'll, I'll put together the uh, validation tools and all that kind of stuff. Uh, demonstrate interpretation of the competency standards and identification of evidence requirements. So that's just when we sit down with your apply safe car driving behaviours or how to do bookkeeping with a plumber or whatever the case may be, um, Sparky, whatever the case may be, um, that you understand what's expected from that unit of competence and and you can validate against that but that's something we're going to do as a group and we'll learn from that that's a learning process we'll validate um the customer service um assessment as one part and we'll do um your guys assessments as the second part so whether or not we use saturday as a part training um for for the last sort of few weeks and we only validate the customer service unit first, that assessment, and then next week um, we move on in the information train, but we validate your assessments just in case you're a little bit behind in creating your own assessments. We can do that. Or if you're like, nah, man, we've done our assessments, let's validate those. So by next week, um, as the information train moves on, I've already got version two of my own assessment ready to go. That's great. So we can go through the questions. I reckon on Saturday, we'll go through the questions of the, of the previous assessments. If anyone's stuck on anything there, uh, two, um, uh, do a bit of learning about some stuff. There's some stuff that I want to go through. Um, three, do the validation process. Um, and four, really probably work out a schedule for you guys to do your assess competence part of that last subject. So whether, again, that schedule for you guys carrying out the assessments can be in the weeks ahead because right now you are overwhelmed with a lot, a lot of work. Um, so there is a bit of a, a a backwash out the back of these subjects for you guys to get some stuff done. But I think if we can come up with a clear plan on Saturday uh, for you guys to move forward, then uh, I'm sure we're going to make um, for a much more uh, comfortable classroom as we move forward. Um, as well as what I've just mentioned, you'll need to demonstrate communication and liaison uh, skills with relevant people and participation in providing feedback and interpre interpreting documentation in the validation sessions. So that's just me watching you guys discuss the validation, filling out the forms together. Um, what we get you guys to do is we'll give you all your own validation tool. You'll all countersign each other's validation. And as you go through the validation process, you'll all be writing down uh, to shared observations and agreements and all that on your own documents. So as an evidence gathering procedure for me, I'll have a observation sheet that I'm ticking off 
but then I will collect your completed, your individual complete, individually completed um, validation um, uh, documents uh, to prove that even though you're in a group environment, you were still producing your own evidence for me to deem you competent. So remember last week when I, we talked about a little bit some of the perils of doing group work, one of the ways of getting over that is that in this validation process where I'm going to get you to do some group work, you're all going to individually um, fill out the paperwork even though you're working in a group. You need to show involvement in reviewing findings and outcomes, including where relevant, contribution to the finalised validation documentation. And like I said, you guys will all sign off and sign in on each other's documents um, and you'll all have your own answers. So that, that allows uh, us to uh, get enough um, evidence. Alrighty, that's it, guys. Job done. Um, any questions? Your line is now unmuted. Tristan. Tristan. Howdy. Cool. Um, I, I, I still haven't got my um, information about um, my task. All righty, oh, for yeah, 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 the previous yeah, assessment. The previous assessment. Yeah. Cool. Let cool. me let me let have, a, me, look let me have that a look at that now. So that it's not opening up on the portal for you. Or was it? Um, I'm trying to think. Was it, it, was, it was the last it subject. Was, was it the assessment creation unit? Like or the assessment competence unit? The creation unit. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, so, yeah, cool, cool. Um, so um, I, I thought we did that. You're going to do um, like everyone. The like I'm, everyone trying, to, the, try, I'm work, trying to work try around work, my work around my echo of my voice echo of um, my from voice, your end. Um, from your end. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool. So we're all doing so, the customer service do unit, and I'm happy to work on that with you guys um, if you want. And yep. on Saturday, so that might be what we do. We, we revisit that subject a little bit and then we'll do a validation process. And then your second task, your second yeah, I thought we were saying that could be yeah, um, could any, you could choose any topic you choose any that topic you wanted that you wanted from your field. From your field. So if you okay, need cool, to help cool. you to yeah. identify a unit of competence, then we'll do that Saturday morning or if you're about Friday, give me a call Friday and we'll, we'll do that time. We'll do that time. Yeah, do that time together. Okay, yeah, perfect. And we'll work out, yep. we'll work out a unit of competence we'll that suits you, not a problem. Awesome. Yeah, sounds good. All right, we'll do that, but it's too easy. Yep. Go Happy, for it, Happy Melissa. Cool. Unmute yourself, Melissa, for sure.